Can a multifamily investor who has the best price and the best terms in a multiple offer situation lose to another investor who has a lower price and less better terms? Hell yeah, happens all the time. In this video, we're gonna go over why that happens and how you can create an unfair advantage over other competitors during the multiple offer situation. Let's go! Recently, I was on the Target Market Insight podcast with John Kasman, and John asked me, are there situations that I've encountered in which investors who had the best price in terms lost out to someone who had other advantages? And the answer is, heck yeah, but let's dive a little bit deeper. Take a listen. Have you done deals or have you seen situations where either you as a broker or an owner has specifically said, hey, even though this offer is not the, the best offer, the highest offer, we want to go with this group because there's more confidence in this group over the other offers? I mean, that happens a fair percentage of the time. I would go as far as to say 30, 40% of the time, we will go with someone who has a higher degree or a higher probability of closing than higher. In fact, I just did it. I just did a little 36 unit deal in Gainesville. I got 13 offers in eight days. And I had, I think, four deals that were an asking price or higher. It was a $3 million listing. One of the guys we chose was about 50 grand under ask price. I had two of the four that were over asking price were $150,000 more than the guy we chose because the ones who offered more owned hardly any listings. I had never done a transaction with them. They couldn't provide banking references. And one of them was just admittedly newer. And so, you know, you have to understand it's devastating to me as the broker and more importantly to the seller, that if we choose the wrong buyer and he retrades or he backs out or whatever, it's really hard to go back to the other offers. Even though we've got several full price offers, it's almost like every buyer is going to now say, ah, what happened? So now there's a little bit of doubt. It hurts my negotiating ability just a little bit, depending on who the offers or the other offers were. And it slows things down and it lowers confidence from my seller. Unless I told that seller, don't choose this guy and they chose that guy, then I don't have that same dynamic. But it's really, really tough to get retraded on something or to not have someone close. So it's super important on the front end to not get offended buyers when brokers are, are really driving, drilling down into wanting financial information, references, all this stuff, because we're trying to figure out the surety of close. So the number one thing that could ever happen is, is that I've already done a deal with you. That's the highest echelon. If I can speak of transaction ability with you, that goes high with seller. So you got to keep your seller hat on. You know, the more you transact with these brokers, there's only 60 of them, right? And if you think about the 80-20 rule, 20% 20 of those 60 brokers, so 12 brokers covering the entire Northern half of Florida one doing the majority of the deals. Now you want to network with all 60 of them, but my point is, is you're going to run into those same 12 over and over again. So it doesn't take long if you're closing on deals to gain transactional history with those brokers. And that goes a long way to the sellers. Yep, absolutely. You mentioned too, like just the amount of groups, right? And a lot of newer groups as well, and maybe groups that don't have that experience. And, you know, maybe you're getting to the point where you're in best and final and things like that. I, I've certainly have seen it where I know groups have felt like maybe their offer is being used to push up the overall price, but maybe they didn't have a real shot at that deal. What are some things in that space for those groups who maybe you've been in best and final a couple of times, maybe you've been close to, to get a deal, but haven't been able to get it across the finish line. Do you give groups direct feedback on, on opportunities like that? Or is there something else that you're seeing that we haven't talked about yet that could be holding them back from getting that deal? Yes. A lot of times we use other offers to push up offers. That just makes sense. That's not a broker being conniving or whatever. You know, John, if I'm your broker and you're the seller, don't you want me to do that? Don't you want me to get you the highest price possible, right? So <laughs> if I can, if I go to Betty and say, hey, Betty, you know, I got another off on the table. It's really good. You know, I need you to get to this place. Yeah, I'm, I'm using John or I'm using Betty to get that up. That's, that's my job. That's my fiduciary responsibility to my seller. I always provide feedback. I mean, to me, it's important because I want to be able to do deals with you in the future if you didn't win. And I want you to get higher prices because that makes me look good, right? To the sellers. And it gets my sellers the best price. So I always say, hey, John, listen, you didn't get it this time. First of all, I try to tell you this before you turn in your best and final. I try to give you the best advice possible. I'll let you know to the degree I can legally, hey, listen, you know, you're at 2750000 and I get permission from the seller always to do this. 
I'm just telling you, you're going to need to be at least 2950 And I still can't guarantee you because there are two other buyers who, if they also get to that point, they own six more deals in the market than you do. So I'm telling you 2950 will at least get you in the game. But if you want to really win this, if these other guys who own a bunch of other units come at that price or higher, you're going to need to be more than 2950 So I kind of give you as much information as possible without telling you the actual price. If you lost a deal, I will go back and tell you, hey, John, I'm just letting you know, like, there's probably nothing you could have done. There were three other guys. They paid X and they owned five deals in the market. I did two deals with them. They put down $400,000 of deposits. You were at 250. Listen, your 250 is fine. Like, that's a damn good deposit amount. But these guys put down $400,000. They're going hard in 20 days. I try to provide you as much feedback as you can because that makes you better down the road. Let me just tell you, if you can combine that strategy of creating the unfair advantage over the competition and then combine it with this video right here on how to offer price and terms that smashes the competition, man, let me just tell you, buyers are going to hate your guts because you're going to be killing it on winning every deal that comes across the table. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you on the next one.